don't feel you've got to do anything. I mean, what, one of the things that we struggle with in our house is the fact the ceilings are very low. So actually Christmas trees, which are very Victorian and about high ceilings and about verticality, have never really worked. And it was liberating about five or six years ago where I just said, okay, well, we'll do garlands because actually garlands were much more traditional and would have been exactly what they would have used in the 17th century. So, you know, always find a way of making sure that you tailor what you're doing to who you are and the way that you live. I think the big thing about Christmas decorating is to make sure that you've got enough time to do it properly. Um, never try and condense it into an afternoon. You're going to be living with these decorations for probably six weeks these days. So you want to kind of get it right. Make the journey as much part of it as the destination. You know, take it slow, think about it. With things like Christmas decorations, I always like to, uh, as if you're doing a cookery show, have all your different options laid out so you know how many dangly ones have we got, how many pink ones you've got, how many uh, baubles you've got. And on a practical level, the very straightforward things, always uh, uh, put the Christmas tree lights on the Christmas tree lit. You know, never do them dark because otherwise you suddenly realise you get these kind of great clods of illumination in one corner. Um, but one of my big things is that I think Christmas itself, that period, um, Christmas Day, Boxing Day, can always feel very claustrophobic. I mean, we're very lucky living in the country, you can go and have walks, you can, you know, open the door, you can actually be part of nature. But I will always use things like spring bulbs as a very important part of my Christmas decorating schemes, particularly on windowsills, things like that. Um, because I love the fact that you, you plant those up several days before Christmas Eve, and yet they're then still going beyond uh, New Year's Day. And you have that sense of sort of spring arriving, that sense of optimism and moving forward that, that really cuts through the smell of claustrophobia and sprouts and granny. So you can always smell very bad at Christmas. I think with Christmas trees, the, um, uh, the real secret is to understand that they, they, they originally, there were no such things as Christmas tree decorations. They were actually the presents so they were um, these very special gifts. You know, you see those kind of Victorian etchings of Victoria and Albert. They had a small Christmas tree in the middle of the room on a table, and they'd hang the toys from it, or they'd hang the jewelry. And I really like that. I think to, to, to give your Christmas tree a, a real sense of personality is very important. And yes, I mean, even, even incorporate your children, your grandchildren. Uh, they always come back from um, uh, uh, school these days with little things that they've made. My mother was ruthless about that kind of stuff. I'd come back from school and she'd go, pot boiler, pot boiler, pot boiler, pot. We might keep that one, pot boiler, pot boiler. And I'm a bit like that with my children and my grandson. But I think the, um, the idea of making sure that you've got a degree of personality to a Christmas tree is very important. Always pick a Christmas tree with very broad needles. They retain much more moisture for much longer and are less likely to drop. Um, and also just try and find one that, that, that really, you know, that we always buy Christmas trees based on height. But never forget that most of the height is taken up in that long skinny thing that sticks out of the top like an antenna. Um, make sure that you are going to love your Christmas tree every bit as much once you've cut that off. Because half the time you need to cut that off to just make sure you get it in. And also keep your Christmas tree watered. Um, even if it's just sitting in sand, uh, which I always like to do, keep it in sand, just keep watering the sand because it will keep absorbing moisture and last a little bit longer. One of the things I really enjoy about Christmas is finding a colour scheme um, that is romantic. I think Christmas should be romantic. I think it should be um, uh, nostalgic as well. I think nostalgia is a very important part of this particular festival. Um, and so I, I really like this at the moment. I really like the idea of using um, uh, pink and uh, kind of soft green as a, a, an antidote to, uh, you know, the, the, the knee-jerk red and green, that very kind of, those holly colours. Um, actually, giving it a sort of a slightly strong pastel flavour gives it a sense of flavour, gives it a kind of a, a sugared almond um, nutcrackeriness uh, that can fit very well into a, particularly into a kind of a, 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 a mid-century modern or Hollywood Regency ki uh, kind of environment. But also pattern is very good at Christmas as well. Never, never underestimate the impact things like uh, wrapping paper has on the way that your Christmas decorations look. I started garlanding the staircase, which it feels a bit American, but actually is much, much older than that. Um, and um, it's, in many ways, it, it really heightens the kind of the theater of Christmas 
We now all live together. I've got, uh, um, you know, both daughters, their husbands, grandchildren. And that sort of sense of going upstairs to bed on Christmas Eve through the garland is, is a very evocative moment, I know, for all of them. And it's probably the one that you, would, you wouldn't necessarily think of because it's, it's, it's not part of the, the, the real focuses of celebration. Um, but actually the staircase is something that has become incredibly popular.